Hi, I'm Bruce and just over a year ago we began our homesteading journey. This week I have help from friends removing an old pitch pine beam. Annie gets the tunnel ready for some early spuds and we get our orchard started with apple tree expert Tom Barry and friends. So this is Scottish apple called James Greve. If you're new here, why not click the subscribe button and become part of our ever-growing community. Hey guys, welcome back to this week's vlog. Be pleased to know the horses are still where I left them. Thank God for that. Uh, and if you're wondering why I'm sharpening my chainsaw, you'd be wrong in thinking that it was for collecting firewood, as much as that needs to be done. Um, up in the roof space between the two chimneys, I've got a huge beam. It's decorative, it's not doing anything. Um, and it looks very cool, but it's very old and it's full of woodworm and rot and I'm pretty convinced that's why I ended up with woodworm in parts of the roof so I've got some friends coming over that are going to help me take it out and I think I'm going to have to take it out in pieces because it's huge <laughs> I'm kind of wondering how on earth it got up there in the first place so uh, yeah wait for them to turn up and then get cracking Right, the cavalry have arrived. So let's just put another one then. Shall we put yeah, another one in? Anyway? Turn them on. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, with them screwed in, it's not going to twist. Yeah, just stabilize it. Yeah, yeah. where we're going. Yeah, so we put another one on that. Do so you want another bigger, bigger one than this? Yeah. Muchas gracias. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. Don't look pretty. That's what was holding that beam in place. Behind the <laughs> disc of metal. That's insane. It is insane. Yeah, okay, yeah. Now if we lift it up, slide that out the way, down to your shoulder, shoulder. with that, three points, uh, not too bad. Right, so we're down, we're down. Go! Okay, that's, that's actually fine. Okay, let it go. Okay, so wait a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna take these off. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have to take these ones out. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Go down my right shoulder. Right, we're gonna go down now. Yeah. Okay, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Down to the block. Yes, boys. Well, that's good. Oh, look at this. Just like that. That's the benefit of not doing solid oak, anyway. And you get it. <laughs> at the very end, yeah. and we'll go like like I am there, and we'll go like a one. Two and then we'll go, okay? So, okay, so we're gonna go. Oh, we'll go on three. <laughs> okay, so a one, two, and this one. Go! Go! 
Yes, boys. <laughs> Good work, guys. Bye. Thank you very much. All right, that is it. The beam is out. I'm very grateful to have good friends nearby that will help me do things like that. And uh, actually, after cutting a cross section through it, although the outside of it looks pretty horrible, the centre is in really good condition. Um, so I'm definitely going to make something out of that. And you could smell as you were cutting through it the sort of sweet smell of pitch pine, which is <sighs> lovely. But it had to come out. Anyway, today is a special day because Elsie, my eldest, has just hit her thousand day streak on Duolingo. I don't know if there's any of you out there on Duolingo. So to celebrate, I am going to go to the shop and buy some Frenchy things and cook up some French food. Um, so yeah, to celebrate what an amazing achievement she's achieved. Travaillez-vous ici? À l'hôpital. Nous sommes médecins. What? What? That's got to be a big milestone. It is a milestone, look, see? It never usually does that. <laughs> hey. Oh, good flip, Dad. Well, that needs a bit longer. Pan au chocolat. Gooey chewy. Mm -hmm. How was your French inspired food? It was great. It was amazing. Thanks, Dad. No worries. Anyway, that's us done for tonight. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey, everybody. I'm back and with a renewed energy of the spring, ready for in bulk tomorrow. I've been working in the polytunnel. I'm just going to feed the pigs all the scraps because um, we need space in the polytunnel for our new growth. <coughs> They're enjoying that. I'm going to take some down to the goats and the sheep everybody's a little bit short of grass at the moment so I'm sure they'll appreciate the crab cabbage crabbage cabbage scraps <laughs> the worst bit about making a mistake like that is that Bruce will put it in the vlog because he's in charge of the edit so at least it proves I'm human let's take the crabbage scraps What about you, Lewin? Are you going to have any? Here we are, the glorious polytunnel. We just mulched the asparagus with some of our horse manure and we pulled up the red cabbages. This is the patch I've been working on just now. There was some um, cabbages in there and what I'm going to do with this area is I'm going to lay down some horse manure and some straw and I'm going to plant some potatoes in there so that we can have another batch of potatoes before the main crops. And this is all the garlic that I've planted. Last year the dream was to um, have a big outside veg garden ready for this year um, but that is still a work in progress so we are probably looking at our main growing space again being inside the polytunnel and um, but I do intend to make a few outdoor beds just not to the scale that I was picturing <sighs> but we'll get there one day. Pigs aren't getting it all but a couple of cabbages there, we've got some sprouts, and a couple of smaller red cabbages, but they'll come and they'll be food for us.
that's a layer of manure and then a layer of straw. And I'm going to plant potatoes straight into that. Woohoo! Bruce, do you think that we should plant the potatoes that we've got as the seeds? Or do you think that we should buy some specific early seed potatoes? I would bring Tom Barry, the potato expert, yeah, um, and see what he says. Um, things you want to ring him for? Yeah. Hey Tom, how's it going? Yeah, I'm good. I just I've got a quick gardening question for you. So basically, we're just freed up a bit of space in the polytunnel, and um, what we're doing, we're just wanting to plant a few early spuds. Um, with the aim to harvest in April. So basically, from our crop that we planted together, um, we've got loads of like suitable seed potatoes that have chitted. Can we can we use those, or would you specify? Would you think we should go out and get an early variety? If they have chitted, you see, that's a sign that um, that they're early. So oh, great. The Yeah. So after getting off the phone speaking to Tom, um, we concluded by saying he's going to come over tomorrow and we are going to be planting apple trees that he kindly ordered for us and he's going to bring us over some uh, early potatoes. So isn't that great? Got the best neighbours around eh? Yeah, I'm actually going to be heading over to a neighbour's house now to go and fix his tractor, so I will catch you guys tomorrow. We're making bridges crosses. It's St Bridget's Day. Yeah, it's St Bridget's Day today, and this is the first year that it's been recognised as a bank holiday, a national holiday in Ireland. So that's a real celebration. Um, and so we're making St Bridget crosses from rushes from our field. After that we're going to plant some late um, tulips to celebrate in bulk. for lunch. Thank you Betsy. And soup. Vegetable soup made by everyone. And me and Elsie. Good morning everybody, I'm back on the camera today and uh, today is an exciting day because a good friend Tom Barry, the legend, has got us apple trees to start our orchard. Some early varieties, I think we've got five or six um, and he's kindly coming over with JJ uh, to help us plant them out. So let's go. Okay. Okay, a barrow in there, David. Full barrow. Full barrow. Just take your point over, Flora. 
It doesn't. It, and if it does overflow, it goes that way. It goes that way. Yeah. 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 No, 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 no. No, no someone's put... It's it. <laughs> is it? Ah, oh, brilliant. So this is Scottish apple called James Greed. Oh, this is great. Getting this in, guys. <laughs> well, it's a stout, you see. Oh, it is. Because you, you can always... And he said, the best thing about the fact that Tom's rang you up and said that, oh, the boss that's good, the fact it's going to get done. <laughs> <laughs> And have you got James Grieve at your place? Oh yeah. And I don't you, think and there's a variety oh, like them. I rate it highly. Yeah. There isn't a variety, Tom. I know 60 varieties. You know, I, I have four trainers. Four. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what? <laughs> it was. It's not the best one. We stop it, we stop it there. And I take this for a scoin and yeah. graft it. Perfect. So that's John O'Gold. And um, yeah, do you mind, Tom, telling people what we're doing with this? Okay, well, what we've done today is we've sown six early apples. Um, we started with James Grieve, a Scottish apple, which I like particularly. And then we have um, Beauty of Bath popular in Ireland. Uh, a lot of people had it. Uh, it's a lovely, very early apple. Um, I, I like it particularly. Then we have two discovery, which children actually love discovery because it's, it's a very soft apple um, and very sweet. It's very declining in my view. But um, And then we, at the end, we have John O'Gold. Now, John O'Gold is a bit later. Um, it would keep well into, into October probably. Uh, but to start off an orchard, you know, these are apples you eat off the tree really. You don't, you don't, you don't store them at all. Um, and perhaps later on we'll extend it uh, with some keepers, apples that, you know, have a variety that you can, you can keep in, until April. Yeah, and what are we doing with this tree now? With this tree, we're just pruning this tree. It's the first time we're pruning it. I like to start them you know, this has been pruned, and uh, it's starting about here, but I take the lower lessons off because I like it to get up a little bit. And to people that don't know, it probably looks a little bit savage cutting yes, yes, all yes, of people, this. Oh my God, people said, oh, you're destroying my tree. But no, because what you're trying to do is to strengthen these um, so that you make a scaffolding. So first four years, really, you're pruning for timber, not for fruit. Um, so I leave that pointing northwards. And so how many years will it be, do you think, till we have fruit? Uh, well, with the early varieties, sometimes, you know, these are two-year-olds. So you'll have a, you might even have a few apples next year. Oh, cool. Uh, and the year after, you know, you should have apples. But it's not a good idea to let a young tree crop. Um, because if you have a massive crop, what will happen is that so many apples, the, the weight will break the lateral. Oh, okay. And also, I've happened, it happened with a, a variety called middle seedling. I did let it crop too early. And it kicked it into something that's called biennial bearing. Oh, okay. that it, one year you'll have nothing. Yeah. And the next year you'll have a massive crop. And that's hard to stop. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I've managed to do and it. So when, if it does start cropping early, do I have to knock the fruit off the tree then? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And it's... I find it very hard to do that myself. I did when, my, yeah. when the trees were very young. Seems very it, kind of it seems, it seems very, yeah, Now, very Beauty of Bath will actually drop them anyway. Oh, okay. That, that's the problem with Beauty of Bath. They, it, there's no the June drop. Yeah. When it tree crops, very, very, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of apples. The tree will itself will drop apples. Yeah. You know, because, and then you have bigger. The apples that are left will be much bigger. Oh, okay. Um, but that's a problem. Beauty of bat now, of all the trees we put in there, that would be my favourite. Oh, okay. That's a great early apple. Yeah, uh, yeah. Old English variety. Um, James Grieve, if you like a tart apple, it's, 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 yeah, it's got that like kind of, apple. yeah, it's nice. But the thing is that you always, if you like, if you really like an apple, yeah. you know, of a different variety, you can put in four or five of them in your yeah. house. You have, you know. But the next thing we'll do is put in some keepers. Yeah. Because my favourite apples 
are say Blindermann, say yeah, go, and that Lamburn, uh, Lord Lamburn is superb. I, it has to have a good year, in, in, in a moment. you have to have a good September, yeah. Sunshine. When you do, uh, it's, it's a good year, <laughs> so is the Rips and Pippin, yeah. I, I love that apple as well, and Ashmead's Colonel. Now that grows well in Ireland, so does Egerman Russell. So we put in, we put in all those, yeah. Because if they grow for me, they're going to grow for you, yeah. And I, I really do, I'm keen to have like a whole. This whole yeah. bit's going to be fruit, soft fruit. Yes, yes, and, yes, and yes. And an orchard here yes, will be yes. so good. It's ideal. It's a lovely yeah. spot. Yeah. Cool. What you've got here, these are Apaches. Now, you can see that they're fairly early because they're beginning to sprout. Yeah. I put those in the tunnel right now. Okay, yeah. Um, and these... And we said about 10, in 10 inches, 12 Yeah, inches. 10 inches are fine. 10 inches are fine. These are Sharpbox Sona. Sharpoxona. Sharpoxona. They're Hungarian. They will not blight. But don't put them... Uh, near potatoes that will. Okay. I find that uh, it can sometimes, well, it can sometimes seem to me cross over. But yeah. Um, these are for outside. Yeah. They grow, they're massive proper. Yeah. They're not very flowery, but they're great spots for chicks. Right, I owe a massive thank you to Tom, JJ and David for helping us out getting those trees in the ground. Uh, it's amazing to have the orchard started. And what's so amazing about Tom is he's just a complete wealth of knowledge. Um, he knows all the varieties that work in this climate and also all the ones that don't. Um, I've been actually over to his place for a little course on pruning and uh, he's going to hopefully do a course in a couple of weeks on how to graft so I can get some of those keeper varieties um, grafted and added to our orchard. And just to top it off he's given us uh, some a couple of varieties of spuds to get us going for earlies in the polytunnel. So I'll wait for any to come back and uh, I'll probably get those in. Anyway I think I'm going to go and have a cup of tea now and then see what's next on the to-do list. Right, Annie's back now, so we're going to get those potatoes that Tom gave us into the beds before heading off to Cork City to go and see Annie's dad. Right, there we go, that's all the spuds in. Um, I think I'm going to leave it here. Just wanted to say a quick thanks to the new patrons I got over this last week. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, it'll be great if you could subscribe. And I will see you guys next week.